Welcome to The Five, where we share five interesting things in black culture and history in every episode. Forgotten black heroes. You know the big heroes of black history in America, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Frederick Douglass, but there are many more that don't get the credit they deserve. We have just five of them for you today. But first, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, let us know in the comments about your thoughts on this episode and any future videos you would like us to create. Benjamin Mays. There is no mistake that Benjamin Mays is first up on our list. It is really sad that unless you attended Morehouse, you have probably never heard of this great man. Benjamin Mays was born in the Jim Crow South to freed sharecroppers in 1894 and moved up to the North to attend Bates College and the University of Chicago. Mays became a pastor and began his activist work in Atlanta. He served as the president of Morehouse for 27 years and met young Martin Luther King Jr. there. Mays was King's teacher and mentor and is widely known as King's spiritual and intellectual father. Mays believed in nonviolent resistance and instilled those beliefs in King. He also helped construct the civil rights movement in the South, and during his presidency at Morehouse, attendance quadrupled in size. Mays also presided over the Atlanta Board of Education after Morehouse. There he initiated the desegregation of Atlanta's school system. Mays delivered his famous No Man is Ahead of His Time speech during King's eulogy. In his speech, Mays declared, quote, no man is ahead of his time, every man is within his star, each in his time. Each man must respond to the call of God in his lifetime and not in somebody else's time. Ida B. Wells Barnett. 70 years before Rosa Parks, there was Ida B. Wells. Ida was born into slavery in 1862 and lost both her parents by the age of 16 due to an epidemic of yellow fever. At the age of just 22, Ida refused to give up her first class seat on the train and was dragged out by three men. She sued the railroad company and won $500, a considerable amount in 1884. But the railroad company appealed the Tennessee Supreme Court and got the ruling reversed. Deeply hurt by the ruling but encouraged by the attention her case got after she wrote about it in a black newspaper, Ida decided to become a writer. After being fired from her teaching job, for writing an article that criticized the condition of black schools in the region, Ida dove deep into journalism. She investigated and wrote about lynchings in Memphis until her newspaper office was burned to the ground. Her office might have been burned, but Ida never stopped writing about lynchings. She distributed pamphlets titled Southern Horrors and The Red Record, both about the horrors of lynchings supported by research. Ida B. Wells was also a suffragist. As a prominent black suffragist, Ida often clashed with the leaders of the U.S. suffrage movement, whom she believed were silent on the issue of racism and lynchings. Ida has influenced countless black feminist activists and was also one of the founders of the NAACP. Robert Smalls Robert Smalls was born into slavery but died an American hero. In 1861, Robert Small, who at the time was working as a deckhand on the CSS Planter, a Civil War Confederate ship, took over the ship while Confederate soldiers were spending the night ashore to transport his wife, children, and 12 other slaves. Together they sailed the ship past five Confederate posts, each of which needed either a whistle or a special hand signal to pass, into the Union territory. After becoming a hero in the North, Robert Smalls went on to fight in at least 17 major battles in the Civil War, later becoming the first ever African American captain of a U.S. vessel. After the Civil War, Robert Smalls had enough money to move back into his hometown in Beaufort where he purchased his former master's house. There he also purchased a two-story Beaumont building in use for a school for African American children. Smalls himself spent over nine months learning to read and write. In 1874, Smalls was elected to the House of Representatives and was the last Republican to represent the 5th Congressional District until 2010. Granville T. Woods This black inventor is referred by many as the Black Edison, but we don't agree with that title. He is much more than that. Woods was the first African American to be a mechanical and electrical engineer after the Civil War. As if that wasn't impressive enough, he held more than 50 patents. 
Granville T. Woods was born in Columbus, Ohio and attended school until the age of 10 there. But he had to drop out of school and find work to help his impoverished family. He served as an apprentice in a machine shop and learned the trade of machinist and blacksmith there. Woods studied mechanical and electrical engineering in college from 1876 to 1878 and took a job abroad the Ironsides. Within two years he became chief engineer on the steamer. In 1880 he moved to Ohio and established his own company, Woods Electric Company. Among many impressive inventions was the multiplex telegraph, a device that sent messages between train stations and moving trains. His work allowed for safer and better public transportation system in the cities of America. By the time of death, Woods had sold the rights of many of his inventions to companies such as General Electric, Westinghouse, and American Engineering. Sojourner Truth In 2014, this African-American abolitionist and women's rights activist was included into the Smithsonian Magazine's list of the 100 most significant Americans of all time. In learning about her story and contributions, it's easy to see why. Born Isabella Bumphrey, circa 1797, Sojourner was a slave in Ulster County, New York. She escaped into freedom in 1826 with her infant daughter. After learning that her five-year-old son had been sold illegally, she went to court to recover him in 1828. She became the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. After changing her name to Sojourner Truth, she joined an abolitionist and women's rights group and published her book, The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, A Northern Slave. In 1851, she gave her famous Ain't I a Woman speech at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in Akron. Her speech demanded equal human rights for all women as well as for all blacks. During the Civil War, Sojourner recruited black soldiers for the Union Army. After the war, she worked at the National Freedoms Relief Association in Washington, D.C. to improve living conditions for freed slaves. In 1865, Sojourner rode in streetcars to help force their desegregation. For seven years after, she worked unsuccessfully to secure land grants from the federal government to former slaves. She was even fighting for prison reform among all the other fights she was waging. There is a larger-than-life sculpture of Sojourner Truth in Battles Creek Monument Park as well as a statue of her in Florence, Massachusetts and on the campus of the University of California, San Diego. That's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one.